This is pretty exciting. Our very first harvest here at Simple Moon Farm. Pick your feet up. <laughs> Don't trip things. Don't trip on things. Watch where you're walking. You're making me nervous. Some jalapenos, which they're little, but I could pick one of those if I needed a jalapeno. I'm gonna leave them. These are the ones I'm excited about though, because these are Santa Fe Grande peppers. And you can pick them when they're yellow like this. So I'm gonna pick maybe two of the bigger ones. These ones are, I think, are sugar rush peach, so we're just waiting for those to get pink. Aren't they pretty though? In the basket. Yep. I should be using my scissors. This is going nuts. Look yeah. at that one over there. That's what a zucchini is supposed to look like. Not like what they look like at the old house. So our zucchini at the old house would look like the little ones that are still just putting on their leaves still. But I would never get one to look like this. So this is awesome. Because now it's starting to say, okay, I can put on my fruit now. I'm big enough. <laughs> now that it's ten times bigger than what we would normally see. So that was great. Yeah, boy, you just turn around and suddenly things are really gro growing up the trellises. Yep. See, I need to go pick some of these pickles. Okay. Leave them too small, like, or just let them be too big because they're growing so fast. Okay, back up. But look, look where you're going. <laughs> Thunder? Yeah. Never know about the weather here. We've got one of these um, eggplants that's already got just a ton of stuff going on on it. Nothing to pick, but it's pretty cool to have eggplants starting to do something. More peppers? Yep. A nice looking plant here. Yeah, that's the uh, purple moussaka, I think it's called. Purple moussaka. Yep. And so it's going to have long purple peppers. See this? Oh, yeah. It goes yeah. pretty. Long purple pepper eater. Yep. And those are sweet peppers, so they'll be really pretty with my, you know, green peppers and red peppers, and then I can. Really cherry tomatoes? Yep, so there's some cherry tomatoes. They're not ready yet, but they're looking pretty pretty good. Especially for as late as we got them in. 
And then my beans are starting to set flowers. So we're gonna have a ton of beans soon. Looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to the beans, not so much the canning of the beans. <laughs> Cause I think there's gonna be a ton of them, which means I'm gonna be sitting there Picking beans in the morning and then shelling beans in the afternoon and canning beans in the evening. So that's going to be a lot of work. So there's some more cherry tomatoes. And then these are the saladette oh, ones. Look at that one's already eating. turning. Oh, and we did have some storm. bit of insect damage down here. Yeah, down at the end, the insects are kind of getting the kind of cold flower kind of stuff. With these. This is doing good. Yeah, these are the Napa cabbages, and I'm checking them to see how much they headed up. Because I'm thinking of it tomorrow. Does it bother you that we've got some insect damage, or is that kind of expected? It's expected, especially since I planted those those things like probably two months later than I should have. So it's kind of unlikely that they're going to do anything at all. Okay, that's a good angle. Got great look, looking plants behind you. So what was it you asked me? Uh, let's see, I asked about what you're going to do with the Napa cabbage, but then I asked, were you worried about the insect damage, or oh. is that expected? No, it's it's about what I would expect, especially since we planted these about two months later than we should have, just because we didn't have our gardens ready, and Brian wasn't here yet, and I went ahead and got my seedlings started, thinking that, you know, well, he's for sure going to be here soon. <laughs> and then it still ended up being quite a while. So, um, yeah. And then I was still kind of hoping that we could get the garden in a lot faster than we did. So it just ended up taking a lot longer to get them in. But we'll see how they do. And if we get a little bit, then we get a little bit. It's better than nothing. So, mm -hmm. Give me a quick big smile with your first harvest. <laughs> this is not how I look. This is fake windy. <laughs> okay, give me the real windy, real windy smile for the harvest. So it's not the real windy smile. Are you watching where you're walking? Yes. Because I don't trust you when you start being goofy because that's usually when you start falling on my vegetables. <laughs> No falling out my vegetables. Back that camera up because it's too close to my nose. We need more butter for my green beans. I think this is twice the number of green beans that we had last year. I'm a little worried about that because <laughs> I have still quarts of green beans in the refrigerator, in the refrigerator, not in the refrigerator, in jars in the basement. I need a pig because then if I have a pig, I have bacon and ham hocks and then I can have more beans because I have bacon and ham hocks to put in the beans. <laughs> Dinner tonight? Dinner. <laughs> what about the basil? It smells good and I like to put it in my tea and dehydrate it with my freeze dryer. It smells good. Mm -hmm. Also, when I get nauseous from my headache, I put some near my face. Like, I might stick it under there, or you know, if I have a pocket, I'll put it in my pocket. It's just a pleasant smell that relaxes me. Well, I hope the nausea isn't a result of my sense of humor. No, that's the headaches <laughs> are caused by your sense of humor. <laughs> All right. So, in essence, yes, the headaches are your fault, Brian. <laughs> and, the, and so is the nausea. <laughs> so, 
so what we have going on here is kind of a little bit of an extension of the potato garden. I'm trying to figure out if this compost is okay because I got it at the Lowe's and so I'm a little bit worried about using Lowe's compost, I guess. Bag compost? I don't know. Just bag compost in general. It's nothing to do with Lowe's. Lowe's is fine. It's, it's the composting world in general that is a problem. Because I can't go ask somebody, where did this stuff come from? <laughs> so I've got some beans that I'm trying to grow in here. You can see. I've got one coming up. And I'll check it tomorrow to see how it's doing, but... Just testing the soil. Yeah, I'm just testing the, this cow manure compost because there's so many herbicides and things that people are using right now that basically would kill plants in the future. So I don't want to put that on my garden and then have to deal with it in the future. So we're just going to test this a little bit. And if it doesn't work, then I'll have Brian get rid of it out to the back 40 somewhere and We'll let it rot out there and we won't do that again <laughs> but if it does work out okay then i'm gonna put um sweet potatoes in here okay just this little square or you want to do I'll more pro i'll probably extend it a little more because i do have more sweet potato slips coming yeah some some different varieties that i ordered off the internet and then i also bought some when i was at lowe's that looked really nice our neighbor brought me some cow tubs, mineral tubs from his cows, and those are really great. They are the perfect size to do this. And so what I've got going on is just mostly some different mints. So these are like peppermints and spearmints, and they smell so good. And they are doing so much better than they ever did in Oregon City. So I was very happy with my mint there, but it never grew this fast so this is great and these seedlings really suffered a lot those seedlings suffered a lot too but these these all suffered quite a bit waiting for me to have a place to put them and so they're starting to kind of jump back some of them faster than others obviously because these mints just look so good whereas they look like this when I put them in <laughs> So, so that they went from that to this is great. And there's a few different medicinal flowers and things like that in here. I've also got some um, mandarin lemon balm, which I really am excited about. And some mojito mint. And then I've got some thyme that isn't looking so hot. And, and again, only just went in and some chamomile that decided it wanted to go to flower inside the tiny little pots that I had them in while I was waiting to get this stuff set up. And so they're not looking so hot down this way, but, and then some of these, the goats also ate, but I think some of this will jump back and if not, I can put more seeds in and I'm pretty sure it will grow really quickly. But what I'd like to do is have this go further down and meet the rest of the garden down here. And then I'll have more tubs down here and then maybe have some other things next year that we run along the fence line. I'm thinking like maybe some asparagus and things like that. Do you imagine containers and tubs as being the finished? No. Wait, you wanna do raised beds or uh, are you thinking in ground? Um, well, I don't really want to do, I'm not really sure yet because what I had originally been thinking is that I would use some of the, the rock that we have here and build container garden type things, maybe around some of the tubs even at some point, maybe dig them in and put rocks along the, the rubbery edge to kind of and then over time, that tub's probably just going to disappear into rocks and, and soil and stuff. But it will help to contain some of that mint that will want to... I don't want to have a mint yard. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> And I also want some of the other 
herbs in there to have a chance as well. I'd kind of like to have some of that be more up front rather than right along here. So it may be that if I get time enough to do some of that next year or the year after that I'll focus more on that and put something like a, a bunch of strawberry beds up there or something like that would be more what I would envision for up here in the long run. Really, the hose, the strip hose works really well for the potatoes, but it doesn't seem to drip as well when it comes up, and so it's not as consistent across these, and it's dripping so much just in a weird spot that I'm thinking what I'll end up doing is building a little strip of the, the regular hose and just get some little quarter inch drip hose to put in each of these to circle around them or something like that. I'm kind of thinking about having a bed that goes along here that I would put asparagus in and maybe a section of it that would also be for rhubarb and then having beds that go along here that would be for strawberries. Well, tubs are a good way to see what grows where and yep. practice a little. Yep. And here, to have a bunch of rows of raspberry trellises, raspberry blackberry trellises, in little short garden beds with the trellis lines that go up on either side with, to help contain the canes. So, so those would maybe be up in here. And then we have our fig trees in here. And so this would be like the small fruits. <laughs> you know, because we have our strawberries. And then once we move all of this over, we have the fence moving that away to within the easement. I want to do more of the potatoes and stuff like that over here. Beyond into the pasture, expanding mm -hmm. the garden that way. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm all in favor of a big garden. I'd like to see less grass <laughs> for me to mow and more garden yep. that's productive for you. Yep, yep. But I want up front here to be more flowers and perennial type things and have it be more pretty and then up here where the pear tree is that's kind of where I'm thinking of having more like raised beds eventually and ha because it's really rocky right there it's like there's huge bedrocks and so I'd, I would like to see more of the of a raised bed garden that has like the arch trellis and things like that. But I want, would want to do more herbs and medicinals and mints and things like that up there. Well, there's going to be a few years of transition. None of this is going to happen overnight because I also want to do a big flower garden down there and have sunflowers going down the driveway and have the driveway be all wood fence instead of the barbed wire and not have this fence here at, for the pond at all and so there's a lot of things <laughs> that I would like to change right up in here. These I planted yesterday so this is some rosemary we've got some chives and some what is this stuff called marigold mace Mexican mint, so that's something I'm hoping I can make teas out of. This is echinacea, um, and that one right there is a Chinese chive. And then this is some really sad looking holy basil that I nearly killed by leaving it in containers. All of the things I nearly killed by leaving it in containers. And then I think I put dill and chamomile in these. So once they come up, I'll know what they are. And this is chamomile that I started in little seed trays and left in there too long. And so now it looks horrible, but I'm hoping it will eventually just kind of do its thing. It may need better watering than what the, the, this drip 
is providing. I haven't gotten around to that yet. And then we, so we've got sage and some, we've got a couple different like flowers and things mixed in here. This is lemongrass and thyme, verbena and hyssop. Um, and then these, this is mint and this is a mandarina lemon balm. So it smells very much like mandarin oranges. And then this is peppermint and spearmint, a mountain mint that is not doing very well. Hopefully it'll do a little better because today Brian and I went up here and drilled holes in these, which we should have done a while ago because it keeps raining really hard and these, these barrels were filling up, so they need to be drained. I've got some whorehounds and then this is a lemon bee balm. Lots of stuff that I can make teas and I'm hoping to make some whorehound candy. I probably don't have enough, but I could kind of get them started and then move. Those will probably come back if we don't have hard winters. And then I can move them into larger and larger things until I get a whole bunch of whorehound enough to be able to make some hard candies. So that will be fun. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us. Bye. <laughs>